there was in his presence we are strong. I want to say thank you for your time wherever you are, whatever you are doing at this moment, God is aware. Believing is our connection. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, we thank you for inviting us to come and talk with you at this time. Amen. For some months now, we have been talking about the word, the word, which we refer to as faith. Only faith places God, nothing. So we have been talking about this, and I wish I know it's very essential for church, very important, the word faith. Hallelujah. Let's quickly take a look at the book of Colossians, chapter 3. Living as those made alive in Christ. That is, this is the, the topic. Now, I will take my reading from verse 1 and verse 10 there. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Are you actually raised with Christ? If you are raised with Christ, the life you are living is not yours. In him you live, in him you talk, in him you have been. Take note of that. Hallelujah. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your heart on things above where Christ is what? Seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. Mm. I take you back from the beginning. He said, since then, take note of the comma, since, comma, then, mm. you have been raised with Christ. If you are raised with Christ, the life you live is not yours. You live in Christ. Mean in him you move, in him you live, in him you talk, in him you sit, in him you dress, in him you do everything. Remember the message last week in this world, you have tribulation. Cheer up, I have overcome. That is in me, I will keep you safe. He said that. But here, since then you have been raised with Christ. It means in Him. You are in the world, but you are not part. Are you with me? So let's take our reading to verse 10. Put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge, in the image of its creator. One cannot just be renewed without study and act. That is, it's referred to the heart, which we often talk about. Faith is of man's heart. When you refer to heart, we say spirit. Faith is of man's spirit. The heart is renewed by studying and by acting upon the world. They are talking of renewal now, but the heart, your spirit, can only be renewed by studying and by acting upon the word. The word of who? The word of Christ. You may read the Bible for so many years. If you do not at it, you are not a doer. The mind is not renewed. One may read Bible for many years. If he does not 
art is is not a dua. The mind is not what? Renewed. Many Bible students are deceiving themselves because they are not acting, living, doing the word. The word is God speaking to you. Take note of that. The word is God speaking to you. God and his word are one. The word is always now. 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 Take note of that. The word of God is always what? I can hear you. I confess now. I receive now. I believe now. 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 If what you are here for is not now, if you are not received now, what is essence? The word is always now. I receive now. I confess now. I believe now. Now, 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 now. The word of God. Jesus is the word. Jesus is the living word. It's the living word. If I'm not living in the present, my enemy will have declared me. TV Joshua will not be here today. If my relationship with God is not now, you will not be here today. Because your relationship with God is not now. That is why you are facing life up, down. The way is always now. I receive now. I confess now. I believe now. At now. If Daniel's relationship with God was not now, lion would have consumed him. If Meshach, Shadrach, Abednego, their relationship was not now with God, they would have been consumed. If David was not now, History will have taken over now. Now, they were not in the book. Take note of that. The word of God I'm talking about, not in the book, not on the written pages, but in the lips of believers because you take your Bible you want to sleep you put it under the pillow Psalm 35 you believe when your enemy is coming that will fight your enemy no the word not in the book not on the written pages but in the lips of what? Believers. Mm, it's believers. When you enter some houses, you will see a Bible being tied at the corridor. The word of God, not in the book, not on the written pages, but in the lips of believer. What do I mean by lips of the believer? Yes. 
the more you meditate about what you read, the more familiar you become with God. Meditating on each word, turn it over and over in your heart. Let someone say, turn it over. Turn it over. I can hear you. I can hear you. Over. 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 over, over, over in your heart. Do you know how to turn things over? When you read your message, the Bible, turn it over. Begin to think over it. Think over it. Think over it. Think over it. Read the Bible in order to live. Tell your neighbor. I can hear you. I can hear you. Do you know what it means? As if your life depends on knowing it. As if if you don't read, you die. As if if you don't read, you cannot live. Read the Bible in order to live. So you tell your neighbor, in order to live, I have to read my Bible. You want me to live, I have to read my Bible. If I don't read my Bible, I cannot live. Turn it over and over and over in your heart. As you are sitting down now, I'm expecting you to begin to turn it over. What is going on in your heart? Begin to turn it over, turn it over, turn it over, turn it over. So what is going through your heart? Your heart. Something. Yes. That is a picture of the well. Turn it over and over and over in your heart. I will begin to tell you about Elijah, Elijah. No, I will not go into those. Because you need to be a Christian before you know about Elijah, Elijah. You need to be built up spiritually. Tell your neighbor, I need to be built up spiritually. And a philosophy cannot, cannot do that. Theory about this Bible cannot build you up. History about this Bible, about Elijah, Elijah cannot build you up spiritually. Maybe you don't understand me. Listen, you expecting me to tell you about Paul, Apostle, Peter, Elijah, Elijah, Moses, John the Baptist, Bethlehem, and all that. No! History. Cannot build you up spiritually. The theory about this Bible, there's theory here. History. Philosophy. Cannot build you up. You can only made spiritual by living in the world and by the world living in you. The world builds the nature of Christ into us. The world built nature of Christ into us. The world dominating you is Christ's war, lordship in you. Till now, I'm still not satisfied with faith bracelets given to you. Because you don't know the important. You don't know the important. What you do reveals your character. Ask your neighbor, what are you doing? This to 
turn over and over the word in your hearts. This, to what? I can't hear you. Turn over and over. It's getting too late. The moment you know it's getting too late for you to be spiritual, you get it. You are getting late. All what you have planned from beginning. You want to be this, you want to be that, you want to be this, I want to be this, I want to be married, I want to have children, I want to have me, I want to have female, I want to build a house, I want to be graduate, I want to be a professor, I want to travel all over the world. You agree with me, cannot solve your problem, and yet your problem is not over. Because that was not the answer to your problem. Until you are spiritual. If you are not spiritual, you cannot have the peace we are talking about. What you inspire to achieve only comes with peace. Until you are spiritual, you cannot be content. Contentment is all about spiritual contentment. When you are built up spiritual, no matter how little you have, you will content. No matter how small, no matter how big, it follows with contentment. And uh, money does not give uh, the contentment Fame, being a president of your nation, does not. Until you are what? So, to build you up spiritually, philosophy, theory, on this way, history, about this way, John the Baptist, has still it is, 12 disciples, Peter, shadow raised dead. They are history. History of the word, theory of the word, and philosophy of the word cannot build you up spiritually. This is why we keep pounding on faith, aspect of that faith. I would not go to all those history for you. They were not in the book, not on the written page. It's our contact with God. The where is our contact with God. It is his contact with us. Not the where in the book, on the written page, but in the lips of the believers. No created things is hidden from him. All things lie open. There's nothing you can become that I will give testimony. I will stand to give testimony until you are spiritual. Tell your neighbor you can never achieve anything. I will admire. I don't admire anything. You say, I'm a millionaire. I say, okay, well done, millionaire. I'm the richest in the world. I say, oh, well done, sir. Uh, I'm the secretary general. Okay, you are welcome, sir. 
I don't fancy in all this until you are what? Until you are spiritual. When you are spiritual, sir, your honor, sir. That is first step achievement to God. Every other achievement, Satan can whatever you become can can be can be destroyed within a second. What you achieve so far and you don't know what will happen next. And you cannot call your family, okay, come. Um, tomorrow it's like I'm going to join Jesus Christ. Do this, do this, do this. This is my way. Share it this way, this way. In the evening tomorrow, I'm going. Okay, come, let's celebrate. Oh, happy day, oh, happy day. Okay, don't cry. I mean, it's a wonderful place. And when it is just exactly the day and time you, you, you measure, you say, okay, come, 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 let's pray for you, all of you. Hold me. In Jesus' name, amen. It's gone. How many in the whole world? How many of your brother have achieved this feat? How many of your relatives you know that achieved this? That is what we call spiritual. Someone who is related with material world and immaterial world. Celestial world. But you always cry. I eat a oh, What are we going to do with this? What are we going to do with this? this somebody will come. So, yes, I get. This is my own get. Another one will come and do that. Trouble. The bank will say, okay, this is the debt. They have to confiscate this. They have to sell this property. They have to do this. This is the life you people know used to. Vanity upon vanity. When you know what you have become so far, and, uh, and the beginner is not the owner but the finisher. Your end, you cannot say bye-bye. You cannot pray for people. You cannot pray for them and share with them. And you don't know. Suddenly, you just unprepare. So this is why we have to talk about it. I have to build you up spiritually. You cannot be built up spiritually on the history of the world. There is history here, inside here. I'll just tell you, yes, Jesus work first 40 day, 41, 49. Yes, and uh, he made the plan to see this history, she said. And the Bible was given to us by inspiration. The holy men were inspired, carried along by the Holy Spirit. Holy men. They were not philosophers. Whatever you become, I don't fancy it. I don't. It's not. I don't admire. I just. When you are giving testimony. I say, okay, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Whatever you become, president, secretary general, without being spiritual. Oh. Hallelujah. So, a spirit give back to material things. A spirit creates material thing, and you are the greatest material thing. I'm not praying for you. I'm only telling you your position. So, if a spirit creates you, and God is spirit. So 
Now, what is your position? Why are you now worship material? Instead of God, a spirit creates material things, and you are one of the things spirit created. Now, you are now worship materials. It's in a worship God, and God is spirit. It's material we are worship. Because material has taken off your time, your quality time, your best time, you give it to material. When you are sick, that is when you remember to pray. Material take off your time, your quality time, your best time, your precious time. You see your relationship with God as one of those things and is the only thing. You compare yourself with your colleague because he's richer than you. That's not me, it's better than you. If you are more spiritual than him, you are better than him. We don't compare, we don't measure our size by material. The best measurement is spirit, not by material. Uh, this man is, he has money, this man has fleet of car, this man has a lot of private this one has car houses, this one has this, this one has money, this one is president, this one is well no, this one is superstar, but you are nobody. No, we don't measure ourselves by material. This one that is very rich, richer than you and very rich and you are not rich, if you ask him what is going through spiritually and what you are going through spiritually, you give thanks to God. So I will rejoice, see you grow spiritually. That is my testimony. That is my testimony. Anybody can be rich. Anybody can be, can be president. Anybody can be popular. Anybody. But not just anybody can be spiritual. So the Spirit of God gives energy and sharpness to word. You can spread the word, the word of God. But the question, without the Spirit of God, your work cannot be sharpened, lack energy, will lack being. So I know the lesson you are taking home today is don't measure yourself by what? The materials. Someone is richer than you does not mean it's better than you. We Christian, we are made spiritual by living in the world and by the world living in us. So if you meet those whom you are looking at as the richest, the famous, the popular, the superstar, whatever, what they are going through spiritually, if you know it, you would never want to be like them. So therefore, yearn to be what? Well, to be spiritual. By meditating on the way, turning it over and over in your heart. Don't allow your heart free. Meditating on each way you read. Turn it over and over and over and over. Yes, when you are spiritual, you can be what God wants you to be. 
But when you are not spiritual, you can be anything. Many are rich, but that is not the will of God for them yet. Because the riches they have is without peace. <laughs> you can be rich without peace. You can be famous without peace. You can be well known without peace. You can achieve that feat without peace and comfort. But when you are spiritual, you will become what God wants you to be. Then you are what God says you are. You can do what God says you can do when you are spiritual. Can somebody come here and just put this in summary and in a nutshell? Tell me the lesson you learned. Come on, brother. Come on. Come forward. Emmanuel, the summary shows God is the ultimate search. God is the ultimate search. Nothing you have on this earth that does not come from God, that was not the product of God. And being the highest product or greatest product of God Almighty, you have to look up, not down. When you are pursuing worldly things at the expense of your spiritual growth, you are going down. But when you are pursuing God at the expense of worldly things, you are going up. So since God is higher and is the maker of all things, let's go to him and let him make us what he wants us to be. But when we leave God and pursue his product, we will go down. There is a time of crisis in any man's life. Whether you are holy or you are not holy. When that crisis comes, when you are not pursuing God, you are pursuing more worldly things. Those worldly things will swallow you up. But when you pursue God, your times of crisis come like the way it came in the life of Job. Your time of safety Pastor. will appear like a sword. Thank you. Thank you. Once again, let me just turn to this side. Emmanuel, uh, what we are taking home today, especially me, is that for you to live, you get the life from the word of God. When you turn it again and again and again in your heart, it will give you life. And you can create, if that word is in you, you can create because it is from the spirit that we create the material. The material came from the spirit. I think that's part of what... Uh, we can take home today. Emmanuel. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. And hallelujah. You know, people conscious of their problem, not God. You know, to be conscious, to think. Hey, 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 I would like to get out of this. If you are now begin to be conscious of God, you can never be conscious of your problem again. Because you are conscious of your problem, you can never be conscious of God. And when you are conscious of God, you can never be conscious of your problem. It's not possible to be conscious of two. It is one thing that goes through your heart. You see, at the time you are thinking of joy, your achievement, the success you make, at that moment, you forget about your failure, your setback. But when the issue of failure now take over your heart and begin to think about it, then you forget about the success you have made. In the same day, when you are thinking of your problem, you cannot also think of God, unless you drop that problem and begin to think of God. So it is time now you should now begin to be God's consciousness. Instead of your problem. And when you are conscious of your problem, you are not seeing fear. And two does not go. It is your problem and Satan that go together. They are synonymous. But 
God and your problem cannot go together. So I'm sure that when you are conscious of your problem, you are conscious of Satan. Because your problem and Satan are synonymous. But you may not know. You say you're a Christian, but you may not know. You just think, ah, I'm having this pain. It's paining me. It's paining me. Where are you I'm going to church. I'm having pain. I have pain. You are conscious of pain. You are conscious of Satan. But because he's the one responsible for it. The same thing when you say, ha, glory be to God. They have paid me the money. <laughs> oh God. I'm happy now. Yes, yes. You are conscious of joy. You are conscious of God. Because God behind it. You may not know that indirectly you are watching Satan. Indirectly, you are confessing Satan. And that nullify your confession of God. Tell your neighbor, that nullify your confessing of God. Indirectly, you are confessing Satan when you are conscious of your problem. Indirectly, 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 you are confessing Satan. Because Satan is behind your problem. When you are conscious of your problem, that nullify your confession of God. So what are you thinking about now? Turn it over and over and over. Don't just begin to meditate it. Meditation cannot solve the problem just like that. You have to meditate and turn it. Your constancy. When you say it's an Ashiva, it means it has been consistent in what he's doing. It's not because uh, he jumped once. You say, ah, the man knew how to jump. He will have to jump many times, jump many times. Yesterday he jumped where? Well. Yesterday he jumped where? Well. Three days ago he jumped where? Well. Four days ago he jumped where? Well. Oh, well. You can see his consistency in what he's doing. It will be too soon to say someone, oh, the man is, is wonderful. It's wonderful. The consistency is what we call Ashiva. This is why the Bible says the beginner is not the owner, but the finisher. Ashiva needs to pass through the valley of shadow of death before you can be an Ashiva. We call shadow of death resuscitation. R E A L, resuscitation. A situation that's beyond human. You cannot run to God's Father to help you because it's beyond your God's Father. Only God. That is Ashiva, if you pass through it. So, what are you thinking about? Don't just stop thinking. Don't just stop meditating because you are here. After living here, you stop meditating. What is happening on the outside overwhelms you. You forget your inward man. Your inward man needs to eat. In the same way your outward man eats. The inward man eat through meditation. He eat through what? Meditation in the word of God. Tell your neighbor, when you live here, you feed your outward man. I can't hear you. When you live here, you feed your outward man with food. Don't forget your inward man. You need to eat. You eat through meditation in the word of God. And uh, remember, you feed your outward man morning, afternoon, evening. So in the same day, you have to feed your inward man morning, afternoon, evening. That is, to feed your inward man morning and afternoon, evening, 
you have to turn it around, meditate over and over, and over and over, and over and over, and over and over to feed him constantly. That is what I mean by turn it over and over and over in your heart. Some will say, what will I think about? What will I meditate about? There is a word anointed for you to flush out and to make your word sharper. There's a word anointed for you. Take more of me, O Lord. Give me more of you. Take more of me. Give me more of you, O Lord. That's what you begin to meditate. Meditate, meditate. Med that is the summary of the whole Bible. I told you that the way builds the nature of Christ. When you say, take more of me, if you take more of you, you are more of yourself. When you are more of yourself, it has to do with unfaithfulness, hatred, pride, greed, food of flesh. That is you, that is you. And God is food of spirit, faith, obedience, humility, kindness, goodness. These are the things you are saying. Take more of me. That is my unfaithfulness. Give me your faithfulness. That is what you are saying, which is the summary of the whole Bible. Take more of me. That is your disobedience. And give me your obedience, O oh Lord. Take more of me. I want you to say it aloud with me. Take more of me. Give me more of you. O oh Lord. Take more of me. Give me more of you. Take more of me. Give me more of you. Yes, sir. Well. So these are the where that would be turning over and over and over and over in your heart. It's only our man that given us a summary of the message. We have not seen any woman that actually challenging. We are looking for a woman, woman. Okay, come on. Come on, tell us. What are you expecting the viewers and the people who are under the influence of this message to take home. My name is Omomi Olaupa, especially me. I think so much about worldly something. Yeah. I think- You think I, much about fleshly desire? Uh, first one, I uh, think every day I need money because I want to wear gold, driving big cars. But today, I see something that I know that there is God. Hmm. Clap for her. Clap for her once again. That's it. She's using herself as a good example. She said for her, before now, she thinks so much about fleshly desire. I want to have cars. I want to build a house. I want to travel all over the world. I want to go around. I want to enjoy myself. But you see, coming here today, this TB Joshua is saying different thing. <laughs> huh? Okay, let's hear more. Okay. Since when I was born, I don't think something small. All the time I think big something. Even my school, there was everybody know me. I love big, big something. Like BB what? I love cars. What, what, kind of, what kind of car? Big, big cars. Let's like what? Jeep, all those big, big cars. Like what kind of car? Uh, Murano, my Jeep, all those things. <laughs> <laughs> my God. We, I don't go with this small. I don't place, but I love big, big something. Hmm. I like to be in a big, big. Maybe I'm here now. I want everybody to know me that I'm here. Hmm. Everybody to look at me. Oh, this girl, she's big girl or something like that. Hmm. But today, I'm happy for what I hear. Everything is vanity over vanity. What, what are you learning here now that you should inspire for? 
like that man, the, mo- the first man that first talk, is she is said that when you have money, you will die. If you don't have, you will die. What are you stressing ourselves for? Hmm. Hmm. For nothing. Hmm. You are in Europe, you are in Africa. We are all the same. Hmm. Ladies and gentlemen. In a minute now, you can go. Hmm. But hmm. today I'm happy. Thank you very much. Clap for her. Clap for her. Clap for her. Clap for her. You listen to that? Yes. It says something there. It says whether you have money or you don't have, you definitely. Hmm. But something is clear to, to me. The Bible says a man may not have money and yet be a friend of God. The word money there is a parable, not this cash. Because when we say money, people just believe in cash, coin, notes, cash money. No, it's idiom. Think of every potential of life. You know, your time is also money. And even your time is more expensive than money. No amount of money can buy our time. We know that many, their real value is gone. We are talking of those who, who enjoy their real value. Many people, they are just living. They don't know what they want. You know your good head, this head you have. You come from home, you walk freely, you sit freely. There are some people right now, some of the millionaires, when you are counting one, two, three, four, five, the richest in the world, they are on the seabed. Saying, God, take this my money. Give me good health. Will you want to change, exchange your good health? And collect their money? No. So please, you have to be spiritual Amen. to understand your creator. Don't live a life of ignorance. I don't know that they will pay me the money. I don't know that this will happen to me. I don't know that this sickness will come like that. I don't know that they will sack me. As soon as I knew they will sack me, I would have get ready. I don't know that I will not make it. I don't know that the man will disappoint me. I don't know that the woman will disappoint me. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. If you are spiritual, there is nothing like I don't know. What you are thinking about reveals your character. Ask your neighbor, what are you thinking about? Ask your neighbor once again. What you are thinking about reveals your character. If you are thinking right, you are thinking about Jesus, you are thinking about what I'm saying, and if you continue that thought, turn it over and over and over, me, you have a new direction. Look at the situation with Paul and Salah. They begin to confess Jesus before their situation. Begin to confess your God. Confess your God before your situation. And your situation will turn around. What are you meditating on? That situation, no. 
begin to confess God, the ability of God before your situation. Honor your God before your situation. Tell your neighbor, honor your God before your situation. Honor your God before men. Honor your God before your problem. And God will honor you. Right in your heart. The battle starts from your heart. And when you don't start that battle from your heart, and the trouble now comes outside, and you begin to fight the battle, you, you cannot win the battle. What is happened to you started from your heart. Before it happened, right from your heart. If you can fight it from your heart, you overcome. But when you allow the situation to come outside, and you are now beginning to run, you want to, what can I do? There is nothing you can do. Begin to honor your God before your situation. Honor your God before your situation. Honor your God before your problem. And he promised to honor you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Viewers at home. You listen to that? Honor your God before your situation. And where is the situation? It's not on the outside, on the inside. We believe you have been inspired by the clip you have just watched. Click here to subscribe to witness more of God's power at work in our generation today and stay up to date with the latest prophecies, deliverances, sermons and testimonies from the Synagogue Church of All Nations. Emmanuel TV, changing lives, changing nations and changing the world.